Well, hello everyone and welcome back to Life of Wonders. Welcome back to my channel. As you know, my name is Polo and I love making videos of tall stories and Disney collectibles. And as always, if you like this kind of content and you feel like supporting the channel, well, feel more than welcome to subscribe to it. And that way, you will not be missing out on any of my future videos. Now, today, uh, we come to an end as we are going to be unboxing the last in the whole collection um of the disney designer collection ultimate princess celebration line and this is the second aerial so it's uh one of the three repeats uh for this collection i would have personally loved um so much if they had given us other princesses such as Kid kida or um elena of avalor um something like that would have been so amazing or even anna and elsa in a contemporary um attire but instead of that they repeated um three of them uh which is cool because i think that well in the case of tiana they're both so incredibly gorgeous in my opinion the only one I have not collected so far, it's uh, the second, uh, well, Briar Rose uh, this time. And it is only because I do not connect with her as much. That doesn't mean that I, you know, despise her or that I have a solid uh, critic towards that because I'm perfectly aware that all the designers behind these dolls have made an amazing job that... We should certainly be grateful about. Um, I'm actually a big supporter of this line, whether um, I like the designs or not, because for once, uh, the Disney designers behind these uh, specific takes have had the freedom to um, to rely on their own creativity. And I think that all of them, to some extent, um, are very much experience in the world of merchandise doll making uh fashion design etc i mean if you just look out for them you will definitely find that and i've noticed that there's been a lot of controversy with these dolls because um they are just so far away from how we depict them in the movie but that is the beauty of this collection in my opinion um although every single doll has so many reference to the animation uh, so much more than sometimes other collections such as the first designer collection in 2011 those were just like you know styled versions of their own signature iconic gowns to be honest which i loved at the time because it was an inflection point for disney to try something new and then from that they moved to designer fairy tale designer folktale made night masquerade etc etc but basically that that's what it was and in fact those um those ones were just like yeah high fashion versions of their gowns um but that's it um and this time they've incorporated so much more complexity to it and i think that a lot of people i probably like i'm also thinking that this time around the um the higher price obviously everything is just so much more expensive than two years ago starting with food supplies uh to obviously collectibles if these dolls had been uh, probably one third cheaper, the critics uh, would have been different as well. But a doll that looks very different uh, in a way and then um, it has a high price tag, um, yeah, it's more easy to criticize um, in a solid way, which I think that most of the times is very unfair because we based in this era, we just based our critics as um, they're basically our opinion and everyone is entitled to um, their own opinion and I respect that fully. But there is a line between an opinion and a critic towards the artists, uh, the designer, the, the execution of the doll as such. I mean, it's one thing that we don't like it and it's another thing to criticize it as a bad job. And that has been a little bit unfair, in my opinion. 
so anyway but again i'm a big supporter because it, i'm a big supporter of this line because we have had so many versions of these like classic depictions for every single one of the princesses that you can actually still find out there if you want to like from the uh, 90s which was a glorious era for collecting the basic uh, princesses because obviously a lot of the newer ones were not yet released uh, but then we had different depictions of them just being ever so slightly changed and they're there so to keep producing the same thing over and over for as, as an adult collector um it's more than boring in my opinion so i'm super grateful that we have different lines to choose from um that doesn't mean i i like a hundred percent all the designs within this collection but i don't feel with the um yeah, I, I don't feel with enough um, resources to criticize the work as such. I can only say I like it or not. That's that's the only thing. And anyway, so we will proceed uh, with the unboxing of Ariel. Um, I think that this one will be easier to digest in a way because... It's just an easier door. Um, it's very beautiful. Um, you'll see that the designer uh, behind has a lot of experience, not only um, because um, this person has a, an undergraduate degree and probably graduate too in toy designing, but also because it's been working for Disney for merchandise and toy uh, design since 2010. So all the people that probably have criticized this as Okay, this person made a sketch of it and then um, the people behind have taken it completely to another uh, new place. I don't think so. I mean, I really do not think so because this person is very much an established person already within the company. So I'm pretty sure she's been there every step of the way designing and accepting all the different changes of the doll. So... That is what I personally think. And so before speaking out, I think we should have a more solid um, sort of like background to base our things um, on. Anyway, the box um, this time around is this shade of purple with a bit of a metallic sheer to it. And, and it also has the ombre effect. It's less accentuated than in other dolls. And they've used the um, the seahorse this time as for the icon. Um, the underwater flower and the seaweed and the limited edition for these three repeats are, I think they're all um, 5,500, so it's about the same. Another thing is that they've been massively criticized because most of them um, got to sell. Um, but that is also because these editions are the widest by far, almost like um, being on the edge of not being limited. Uh, because a lot of, like, for example, uh, collect editions of Barbie signature without being numbered are actually less than 10,000 and most of them have been like 10,000 which is definitely double the size of previous releases if not more than that because for example for the first 2011 designer collection there are princesses that were uh, limited to 3,000. Um, so that is a big difference. It's like more than three times that. So no wonder that there's also a chance that there's not a lot of people um, wanting to get. I mean, if they I think that if the uh, number would have been probably 3,000 or 3,500, um, they would have flown um, straight away. Um, that's what I think. But obviously, they created a wider number, which I very much appreciate because of the scalpers, because of the resellers. And that way, even if they arrive to... Um, being on sale, uh, most of the people would have the chance to own a collector's um, designer, limited edition, whatever doll, which is something that I truly value. So anyway, that's for the number. 
uh, right over here we have the name of Ariel, the flower, more of the seaweed, um, and then same over here, but the name is farther um, down. And now I'm going to show you the back. Um, in the back, we can find the picture of uh, Rosio Zintron, which is the designer behind. And now I'm going to be reading out loud um, the description that uh, puts art, put us in the context, uh, in a very simplified context. I mean, again, you can just look out for her and you will see that she's an amazing professional that's done an amazing job here. Um, and yeah, I mean, every single doll includes a sketch of a very early sketch, I'm assuming, of the dolls. And they are never, but that happens to everything. I mean, that happens to literally everything in designing um from attractions layout to fashion designer uh, uh, you know sketches as such in real life so we cannot judge that so solidly um but anyway i will be reading so um you know i won't be reading the um introduction because again um it's the you know the last review so you already know this collection so far Rosio Cintron was born in Washington, D.C. to Puerto Rican and Panamanian parents. As a child, her love for art, toys, and Disney led her to pursue a creative career. After graduating with a toy designing degree, a toy designing degree, that is about three to four years at least of toy designing subjects and knowledge. So... I don't think she's been chosen just for the fun of it. She really knows about the whole manufacture process. And, um, okay, from the, uh, the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York. Rocio landed her dream job at Disney and has been adding a little sparkle to Disney toys since 2010. And that's why I think she's probably also behind a lot of the collectibles or playline um, merchandise from Disney Store that we all love. But then, um, yeah, we've criticized her um, unfairly for this creation, but she's probably been designing all the rest of figurines, dolls, classic play sets, whatever. And um, yeah, I mean, it's over a decade of working for Disney. And after having a studying a toy designing degree in the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York. So there's a fashion take on a doll. It's a toy. I mean, it kind of um, it reunites everything. Another thing I want to say is that um, for once, these designers have had the freedom to express their artistry, which is not very usually found within the toy industry or within, um, yeah, definitely not. Because most of the times there is a lot of marketing to it. And so they um, arrive to the conclusions of what consumers would buy in terms of numbers, in terms of sales. Of course, they would have sold uh, this easier and even for higher the price if they would have given us a more classic approach. But just to have the freedom to just create their own versions in a two, in a, in, sorry, in a true creative context in which we're looking at it as an abstract um, piece of artwork. I think it's just so unique and so amazing. Um, so anyway, um, Walt Disney's The Little Mermaid was not only Rocio's favorite film growing up, but it is also the source of her artistic inspiration. Princess Ariel resonated with Rocio because she longed to be part of two different worlds, celebrating her Latinx culture as an American. Rocio's visions for Ariel's dress is a blend of a uh, painterly and modern aesthetics. To achieve this look, Rocio channeled memories of painting Puerto Rican seascapes with her father, who coincidentally resembles Queen Triton. The inspiration for Rocio's creativity stemmed uh, from the end scene of The Little Mermaid when Ariel emerges from the water and onto land in her shimmering purple dress. So I think it's very clear where 
everything is coming from um and now um <laughs> we're going to be doing the big reveal so i'll be opening the uh flaps on the front and here she is um i will try to focus more because i don't know what's wrong with my um mobile phone just okay give me a second now okay so i in my opinion she's just looking so gorgeous and here we have a pamphlet in which um we can see well i hope you can the sketch but you can look out for it um that we also and just criticized massively because apparently in this sketch she has the hair um you know free and also apparently the overskirt it's a little bit more flowy but other than that it's a very similar um it's one of the most similar um that to be honest and the thing is okay so they've given her this high pony uh to one of the sides which in my opinion probably makes a huge reference okay come on um what is happening a huge reference to the 80s because in a way i mean if the high ponytail was centered in the middle it would be very contemporary as of for now um which i think it still is uh, but to the side it's 80s and her movie was released in the 80s and so yeah i'm not too mad at all we have so many aerial dolls with flowing hair already all of the classic dolls actually <laughs> so um Anyway, and then the design of the dress is very cool. One thing I have to say, and this is my own opinion, I don't um, judge the designer um, whatsoever for it, is that um, it just so happens that for the outer skirt, uh, which probably in the beginning she was thinking about a more flowy material but then later on um they've decided to add all this embroidery work and um it, it they wanted it to be stretched to occupy all the uh space as well um and also apply this sort of like um different grading um of painting which is not quite ombre but almost again like if she was racing from the waters and so um probably they they came to the conclusion that they needed a more solid uh fabric for that the thing is that this pattern uh of the cascading effect in the front open um as it is they've used it for at least three princesses that i can just uh think of at the moment uh within this um collection for each single one is a different approach that is for merida uh, cinderella and now this ariel but i feel that it's almost like a trend like a fashion trend that might be remembered for this 2020 era or something because it's very similar um but again I, and i find it a little bit repetitive but other than that i think that um the design is beautiful um i love that we have to take another consideration here and is that this is a celebration of the princesses why well because um disney first uh princess was snow white uh being released in 1937 followed by sleeping beauty in the 40s followed by cinderella in the 50s now the world has changed so very much and disney is all about celebrating the classics and its heritage so they wanted to give us a refreshed uh take on them in which they can fit under the slogan of being brave and having a kind heart so i think that in that sense they've made a great job because within this collection specifically the princess the early princesses such as snow white um sleeping beauty and cinderella they're looking so daring they're looking very um um very confident and assertive which is something so unique because most of the times they do not have that expression right and for the princesses other than mulan <laughs> uh which 
again so many people have said that she looks angry uh she's actually making that kind of um face throughout the animation and you just need to watch it <laughs> really but other than her the most daring looking princesses such as uh well actually um um ariel bell um you know viana um tiana rapunzel they've given them a more sweet um outlook so they could balance the idea uh of again having courage and being kind and that is something that has a lot of thought to it um more than we know um in my opinion so anyway this time around the display window has little sparkles uh which are not taking a lot of the space and i love that um because we can actually see it all very very well but now i will be removing um the display window and i will show you how she's still you know displayed inside of it without taking her out and then i will proceed to take her out and uh give you all the close-up details wow and here we have beautiful area out of the box and um yeah once again i hope that through this video uh you can um you can appreciate her better than in the promotional pictures and um, maybe it will grow on you um i actually think that she's just so um stunning as it is um so let's start with her face this time around they've chosen this sculpt that we've seen before it's an early sculpt i think um I don't know but the screening is different and so they have added um, these very realistic eyelashes because they're not too dramatic she's looking to the side and outwards uh, which make her look so sweet and then she has this face expression that we can also see Ariel having throughout her animation and uh, the brows are in brown and very realistic she's smiling which is something i very much uh love and then moving to the hair um i have to say i love it as well there is a lot of it um it would be very long if you decide to wash it um this hair is not like the worst material so it will permit to be restyled um in many different ways and this time around they've chosen um well her signature red color with these like light uh light purple um pinkish um highlights which is super cool because again it's something new so she's got like her bangs but um um to this side and probably not like you know um causing any uh shade on her face which is something i like and then she has this side pony which is um actually uh done with her own hair and then from that the rest of her um goes down in like three different curls as you can see so if you put them together it's like a you know full um uh pony um but actually there is a lot of it um there is a lot a lot of her so um yeah i think it's super cool there's a little bit of blue uh on my doll there but that um i will try to sort it out um afterwards then this is the flower that we can find that um it's on her hair um and again i don't hate it at all and in fact i kind of like it uh because we've seen this same flower but in a simplifier um simplified mana and this time it's so much fuller and so cute i think that this one um looks better than the one that came with uh rapunzel and then uh hamika is very soft uh is extremely soft which makes her um look so sweet um even sweeter um in a way and then i love the earrings um this time they've used like these um dingle hopper um inspired earrings uh which is done which are dangling and super cute in chromatic gold and with a white accent 
And now we're going to move to uh, the outfit. Um, so from afar, you can see how big it is um, and how really nicely done it is as well. So we could have um, desired to have like a flowy, you know, organza uh, sort of like thing, which I think it would have been something new and super cool. But I don't think they would um, um, have added this level of embroidery and um i don't know the cutout uh, that is like making like a wave at the end wouldn't have ne have been noticed as much as well as the dyeing um for the outer layer of it because it would have been very thin for all that work in my opinion uh but basically it's all one piece and she has these uh like dress on the inside that is just very beautiful there is one long sleeve and then a strapless um one and then there are these uh pattern that we can find here that resemble in my eyes it resembles like scales in a way so it's stitching detail i love her plaque um or a you know golden accents of seashells and uh, white rhinestones here i think it looks very beautiful as it is um and then as we move down we find that the um inner skirt has this design um that is an asymmetric design with like uh, a pleated sort of um of pattern and then this is basically the overskirt is just huge it's super huge and then it has the draping effect on the front uh, with the waves being embroidered um, for all different layers and with scattered white uh, rhinestones I love this um, treasure chest as her purse it cannot open but i think it just looks so very well detailed it's very baroque looking um so it's definitely something that she could have found um at the bottom of the ocean and just keep it for herself <laughs> for such a, a very special occasion and as we move down uh, we can appreciate her shoes i believe this is these are one of the best uh shoes within this collection the fact that they're painted in three different colors and it's almost like uh seaweed wrapping uh her feet and then we also have like these um seashells i think they are super beautiful, um, super beautiful, really. The heel and the sole are actually like pearls and painted in white. And, um, well, the stand this time is very tight, of course, because the uh, inner skirt is very tight to, to it. One thing I would be very careful is that, of, obviously, these dolls are very tight uh secured in place and even though i took mine um early on just as i received it it could damage the rubbery material for it, the legs so i would i would encourage you to lift the window and take those ties because she's not going to move anyway i mean she's um she's got elastics for both hands and also at the back of her hair there is a there is a tie, uh, but then you will prevent that damage. And this is the stand with the signature of Rocio right there. And now I'm going to turn her around um, so you can see um, how it looks from the back. So basically, this is the side pony. Uh, one thing I forgot is this beautiful bracelet um, in chromatic gold with uh, different underwater motifs and this is the back of the dress so um it's going from uh purple to uh you know um darker blue and then it has i actually like it very much again i think it would have been very difficult to have this in a 
thinner uh, fabric. I love how it looks like the pattern um, of the waves. Um, it's just superb. I love it so much. It has a symmetry to it. It, it goes with the cut uh, of it as well. And then as you can see here, the, um, the dyeing, um, it's uneven because again, it's supposed to like, if as almost because this this would go like that and into the water as if there were like little waves actual waves not these ones um giving it um depth to um where the bottom of the trail is within the shores um so i think it really captures that very well and i think it's been definitely um a purpose when um giving the final uh, touches to this overskirt it velcros really easy on the back is one of the dresses that are more um or easier to undress if you wanted to and yeah so this is the the last doll with this within this collection it's a bit sad that it's over and i'm really hoping that they bring us um more series i know that the disney story is going to be centered so much into the uh, marvel cinematic universe uh in the near future but i really hope that they keep producing uh these dolls that we love so much with different ideas new takes I don't know. I'm really excited for future um, releases. For now, I very much hope you've enjoyed this review and the up close details of this store. And if so, well, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. As always, I'll be more than happy to get back to all of you. For now, stay safe and I'll see you all very, very soon. Bye bye.